Good afternoon, everyone. Will Dupree here in the KXAN live studio. You're looking right now at a Zoom call that is about to begin a video conference with administrators from the University of Texas at Austin. They are going to be talking about what they're doing and planning on to reopen campus for the fall semester. No official decision about that has been announced just yet, and we're not expecting one from this particular call. However, what they're going to be talking about are the factors that will go into that decision once it is available to be made. So again, this was the press release sent out a little bit earlier. It says uh, university leaders are doing some planning for the fall semester. The university does not plan to announce any major decisions. The briefing is a chance to learn about the process of planning for the fall semester. I'm listening into the audio into my ear so that we can be able to share it with you all, and it seems like they're about to get started. So let's take a listen as this briefing begins from UT Austin. For this briefing, uh, which is to talk about the fall planning process at the university. Uh, we, uh, if you have questions on other subjects in the planning process, uh, we can follow up with you after this call on, on those topics. Uh, we want to focus today on answering your questions about fall planning. Uh, a reminder for journalists on the call uh, to please put your questions in the chat window. And uh, I will read the questions uh, and throw them to our participants. Uh, so B, uh, we'll have a, a couple of minutes of opening remarks from uh, President Greg Prendez and Interim President Designate Jay Hartzell. And then we'll go right into the Q&A. So please be thinking of your questions now and queue them up in the chat window so that they're ready to go when we uh, start the Q&A. Uh, the participants today are the President, Greg Prendez, Interim President Designate Jay Hartzell, uh, Vice President of Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Sancia Reagans Lilly and uh, Professor Art Markman. Uh, Art Markman, who's a psychol psychology professor and uh, Sancia Reagans Lilly are both chairing two of the six subgroups that are working on the fall planning process. Uh, we don't have any big announcements today. We just wanted to, uh, we know you have a lot of questions about the planning and we wanted to uh, address those questions uh, and get the dialogue going as we move forward with the planning process into June uh, because we know there's a lot of interest in it. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to President Fenves to start us off with some opening remarks. All right, well, good afternoon. Uh, today is the last day of classes uh, for the academic year at the University of Texas. Uh, and it is a semester uh, that nobody uh, wanted, nobody expected, and I think nobody could have imagined. But I'm so proud of the UT community especially our students who had to uh, quickly uh, adjust uh, their lives, their disrupted lives, and continue their education at the University of Texas in this unprecedented time. And many of them, uh, many of our students have been, been deeply affected uh, personally, uh, financially, with health, with their families, uh, and they are still were able to continue their studies. Uh, but our faculty and our staff, who in just a few short weeks of time uh, turned 9,000 courses this semester uh, into a new format, uh, but maintaining uh, the high quality of education at the University of Texas. For the past month, uh, we have been uh, thinking and uh, have begun uh, very in-depth planning for what will the academic year look like uh, next year, beginning in late August, fall of 2020 for, uh, for our students, uh, for uh, undergraduate students, graduate students, and all our faculty and staff. And we have now organized, as uh, JB had said, into uh, six uh, working groups uh, that involve many, many people across campus uh, that are focused on the academic mission and delivering high quality education uh, in ways that will be safe uh, to our students, uh, safe to our faculty and staff. And Dr. Markman, uh, who you'll hear from, uh, is leading that effort. Uh, our student life, uh, how students, uh, where students live, on campus, uh, how they dine, uh, all the myriad of student activities uh, that make an education, uh, that are an important part of the education and the experience on the 40 acres is being led by our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, uh, Sonsia Reagan's Lully, who you'll hear from. Uh, we also have working groups on public health and the health aspects led by Dr. Amy Young uh, at Dell Medical School and UT Health Austin. 
uh, the research mission by Ali Preston, uh, Vice President uh, for uh, Research, and then the operations uh, and how do we function uh, essentially as a small city uh, with uh, Daryl Bazell, our Senior Vice President and CFO. And finally, Longhorn Athletics uh, and uh, what will the fall football season look like uh, is represented on the working group by Sean Eichhorst, uh, uh, Senior Associate uh, Athletic Director. And we have been working intensively within each working group, uh, maintaining coordination because all of these areas uh, intersect with each other with our goal to have students back in the fall, uh, have a great, qual excellent quality education, and to be able to do it safely. And uh, so that's what we're working on. Uh, that is our, our goal. We are going to be making, there are lots of decisions about details and specifics that I'm sure we'll get into. And we've made an uh, announcement uh, previously that uh, all these decisions we expect to finalize by the end of June of exactly what classes will be, how classes will be offered, how the students will live, how we'll maintain uh, the, the health of uh, the entire campus community and what activities will look like. Uh, so I'd like to uh, call upon uh, <coughs> Dean, uh, Dean Hartzell. Um, we have a very strong leadership team at the University of Texas among our deans, among our vice presidents. I'm very confident for the future of the university, uh, but especially uh, with Dean Hartzell stepping into the role as president of the university on June 1st. So I'd like to, like to call on Jay. Thanks a lot, Greg, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. And I'm I'm Jay Hartzell, and it's been several weeks now since the announcement of the transition came out, and uh, we've been spending a lot of our time. Uh, President Fimbas and I have been spending time together, getting up to speed on parts of the university that uh, were less familiar to me, uh, so I can be ready for the role when it comes. But we know that front and center is this question of what we do in the fall and how do we get to that that point. Um, and I, you know, the announcement came out in, in the middle of that day and that I was going to be interim president. And I think within an hour or two, I started getting texts from faculty, staff, students, and friends and parents asking what's going to happen in the fall. So we know it's front and center in everybody's minds. Um, I'm a parent of two college students as well. And I've been living through it with my own, through my own kids' eyes as we all think about what the fall is going to look like. Um, I've been really encouraged and excited about all the work that's going into this. Uh, as President Fimba has mentioned, we got from sort of zero to, to online this spring very quickly. And now with this process, we have a little more opportunity to uh, be think, think through all the interactions, all the different facets of, of campus life and our students' experiences and how we can really do the very best we can for our students um, with a little more time, uh, lead time as we head into the fall. So um, with that, I'll, I'll stop, but just say I'm honored to have this role, uh, but realize that, that uh, there's nothing more important for us at the moment than figuring out what our uh, summer and into the fall looks like for our students, for our faculty, and our staff. So thank you. Thanks, and uh, let me start with a general question uh, from Stacy Fernandez, which is what are some of the changes you all are considering for the fall? Uh, and I think every, uh, every one of you probably has uh, something to contribute to that question. Uh, yeah, so so the, the, the core is uh, the academic uh, mission uh, and uh, teaching our courses. So I'll, I'll ask Art to, to give an give a overview of those, those uh, factors that we're looking at in, in the schedule and the courses. The, one of the things that we have to do is, of course, to balance the, the, the goals of trying to provide as much of, a, of an in-person experience to our students as possible against safety concerns. We're working very closely with the health and wellness group to look at what appropriate social distancing is gonna be uh, to, to, to figure out how many students we can safely get into our classrooms, into our labs, our teaching lab spaces. And so uh, we're, we're, we're working on that to, to make that work as effectively as possible. We are, uh, identifying which classes uh, will uh, we can meet uh, need to meet in person because there are skills that uh, that students can only learn hands-on which of them may involve a mix of in-person and online experiences and of course UT has been teaching online classes for a decade we have one of the best online facilities for uh, for some of our classes and we will be uh, expanding the range of that high quality production throughout the semester. 
And then of course, we're gonna consider uh, ways of spreading classes out through the day a little bit more. So uh, as you might expect, students uh, and faculty love to teach classes between 10 a.m. and 2 or 3 p.m. Uh, and that's the, the highest density on the campus. We're gonna do a much better job of spreading that out over the course of the day and maybe even potentially lengthening the, the school day in order to make sure that we evenly distribute our students uh, over the course of the day. And Sansi, are there changes you wanna give an overview on affecting student life? And, uh... Absolutely, thank you for the question. And uh, as everyone said, this is such a dynamic team of leaders, all very focused on the overall student experience. So uh, um, the student life aspects of UT Austin will be, remain flexible and will change. Uh, we will be working very closely with our student leaders. Those are um, present throughout campus and involved in many aspects of academic and student life to figure out ways in which we not only continue many of the ways in which they engage in campus life, but that we take this opportunity to learn and to provide new opportunities that reflect the current environment. So. Uh, we are excited to have our students back on campus and ready to engage them now and when they return to make student life as vibrant or even more vibrant than it was before. All right, we have a question from uh, Laura Cordy at the Statesman. Uh, how do you plan for the possibility of a resurgence of the virus in the fall? Well, the, uh, we're, we're pretty certain that the virus will still be present and uh, we're looking at a, a number of things, uh, but one is to, to have the contingencies that we have uh, uh, multiple ways of delivering courses. Um, uh, but it's also going to be uh, something uh, very important we're working on is how we're gonna be doing testing, um, how we're gonna be tracing uh, contacts so that if a member of the campus community does test positive, how we can quickly identify where the, uh, who they've been in contact with and uh, identify ways uh, to be able to isolate them for their, their, their health and the health of the other, uh, everybody else on the campus community. So it's overall looking at the options for the university and also um, being, uh, being uh, proactive in testing, tracing, and isolation. Great, and don't be shy with your questions. Uh, while we're waiting for additional questions, uh, how do you, uh, Oh, here's one that just came in. I'll take that first, but will the university continue to provide on-campus housing? This is from Natalie Martinez. Okay, that's all it. Yes, we uh, plan to. UT Austin will be um, in, in, enrolled. Our students will be enrolled. The campus will be active. We are planning to reopen, and housing is a critical component. Uh, we're still to exploring all of the options that are most important in terms of the healthy and safety of our students and our residents. So all of those factors will be considered. And as uh, we continue to learn in these very uncertain times, we'll begin to share what that's going to look like in more detail. Great. And uh, what are, we have another question from uh, Jerry Quijano. Does UT have the means to test its own students without using the tests available in Austin, Travis County? Uh, the answer is yes. We're looking at uh, adding testing capacity uh, on campus, uh, 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 both through uh, UT Health Austin. And we, we have uh, quite a few faculty and research labs uh, that uh, have, the, have the type of equipment uh, that does the PCR tests. Uh, and so we're looking at increasing our testing capacity and the supplies, including, including the reagents that are needed in the test. Okay. Uh, another question from Stacy Fernandez. Are you considering lowering tuition and housing costs? Uh, so uh, we are expected to deliver a uh, high quality education that UT is known for. Uh, we think we're, we are one of the best values in, in higher education in the country. Uh, we have worked very hard over the recent years uh, on uh, affordability and financial aid. In fact, this fall semester will be the first year of the Texas Advance Commitment and, uh, and uh, being able to uh, cover full tuition uh, for students whose families make less than $65,000 a year and assured, to, assured uh, 
uh, to uh, financial aid for students uh, coming from families up to $125,000. So our goal is to continue to provide uh, the highest quality education possible and to, uh, to uh, address affordability uh, concerns that so many students and their families have. Next. Uh, uh, you're wearing a Longhorn logo. Many of us are. It's Longhorn Friday. And so we have an athletics question in honor of that. How will the discussions with athletics, how have, this is from Jacob Garcia, how have the discussions with athletics evolved in recent weeks? Will the decision of whether or not to have a full fall season be independent from other universities, or will it be coordinated with other schools in the Big 12? Uh, well, it will certainly be coordinated with other schools in the Big 12 since uh, we have to play other teams uh, in football. And uh, so we, uh, and uh, uh, Jay Hartzell is now getting involved in uh, the Big 12 uh, board, and uh, this is the, uh, the one of the most important issues uh, that we are facing now in the Big 12 conference is what will the football season look like? Uh, what kind of schedule? Uh, will we have comp uh, only conference play? Will it be non-conference play? Uh, and the Big 12 is working with the other autonomy uh, conferences on, on these questions. Uh, and while we're waiting to see if there are other questions, you may have addressed this, Art, but if you could go over again or, or remind people what kinds of classes are most likely to be online? Uh, Right. You're so a mix for the fall semester. Yeah. So so certainly because we have to reduce the number of students that we put into our classrooms, our very largest classes are likely to be the ones that get the full on production treatment that will allow them to be both high quality and online. Although I should say, even for many of those classes, while the lectures themselves will be delivered online, we are also working on ways of creating sections for those classes where small smaller numbers of students will gather with the professor or a teaching assistant for activity and, and engagement so even the larger classes that are taught online will have more opportunities for that kind of student engagement and then um, are some of our smaller classes that are still discussion based and lecture based are likely to have some online component even when there are students in the classroom to reflect the fact that there may be students who are uh, self-isolating, not feeling well, or, or perhaps uh, for, for other reasons, we're unable to come to campus and they'll still be able to engage in those classes. Thanks. Uh, and we'll wrap up soon if there aren't additional questions. So be thinking if you have additional ones. I did want to add too for Stacy for your question that uh, we, uh, we do have lower tuition this summer. We lowered uh, the summer tuition is discounted 50% off the normal fall tuition for undergrads, and uh, it is 85% of the normal tuition for graduate students. So we did make some changes, uh, and uh, we've seen strong demand for the summer classes, uh, and this is a, a very valuable way to help students uh, advance toward completing their degrees. Uh, from Laura Cordy at the Statesman again. Do you anticipate any need for furloughs, layoffs, or hiring freezes in the next year? And this could go to either of our presidents. I yeah, so let me let me start out, and I'll uh, I'll let uh, incoming President Hartzell uh, finish. Uh, we, we have already uh, given uh, budget guidelines across the campus uh, for this uh, uh, for planning for next year. Uh, it is the first phase, as as we understand the economic situation, the budget situation. Uh, that first phase, uh, it's, uh, we don't call it a hiring freeze, but uh, it is very, very limited hiring that uh, has to meet specific uh, criteria. So uh, there'll be significantly less hiring than we would uh, normally uh, normally do. And, uh, and, and we have also uh, pulled back on uh, the planned uh, merit increase pools for faculty and staff for next year, uh, with, uh, with some exceptions, but generally we have pulled that, that back. Uh, we expect we will need uh, more uh, uh, to, to address additional budget issues uh, once we have a clear picture, especially about the state fiscal situation, and appropriations, and uh, other revenue sources. But uh, maybe I'll let, uh, let Jay you know, follow up uh, with that question. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Greg. And I, I think to, to your point, the, so much of the picture remains unclear. It's hard now to, just, to think about what we may or may not need to do. We, expect to need to do more things, as Greg mentioned. Uh, so far, we have sort of phase one out there. But as we find out what enrollments look like, what 
uh, state's connection as resources to campus, if those change, then we'll have better sense of, of what we need to do to, to adjust. Um, and I, our strategy is to be strategic in those adjustments um, and, and try to be thoughtful rather than to rush to make quick decisions, not knowing yet what, uh, what the ultimate impacts might be that we face um, in the coming months. Thank you. And uh, next question from Stacy Fernandez segues just from your remarks there, Jay, which is, are we seeing any changes in enrollment numbers for the fall? Uh, and I'll mention that we are seeing an uptick in the summer. We've seen, uh, I mean, we can get numbers for people next week, but we're seeing a, a strong demand for the summer classes at the reduced rate. Uh, are we seeing changes in enrollment numbers for the fall? Um, Jay, you want to answer that? Yeah, sure. So. Um, you know, I think so far the, the numbers for the undergraduates coming in uh, look good year over year, and it's changing sometimes week to week as we see the deposits come in. Um, we've been focusing a lot of our efforts on yielding the students that we've admitted, trying to make sure they, they matriculate and come to campus. Uh, there's some apprehension across the entire country in higher education about what will happen this summer, and will we have what we call a melt, and will that melt be any different than what we would normally expect? Um, so we've been focusing very hard on the students uh, that we've admitted. We want to come to campus, making sure they know that uh, we still want them to come and we're going to prepare a top experience for them. Um, I think there'll be some pockets of more uncertainty across higher education. So, for example, can international students, uh, for us, maybe more in the graduate school, can they get to campus the way they'd like to come to campus? And uh, some of that's just uh, we don't know yet. Um, and we'll have to just see how they can navigate uh, their ability to get here and take advantage of, of their spot here at the university. Thank you. Uh, all right. I don't know if there are any final questions. I'll give you guys a, a moment. And uh, if not, uh, I'm going to kick it to uh, Interim President Hartzell for some closing remarks. I do. Before we do that, I just want to thank the journalists for uh, bearing with us under this unusual format. Uh, we look forward to the day when we can be with you in person again and we can field questions with more give and take. Uh, and uh, that uh, will be coming, but you know we don't know when any more than you do, but we appreciate your patience and uh, we're all uh, impressed by the work you've been doing under these same circumstances, working remotely, reporting remotely in the previous month. We do have one final question and then I'll throw it to, uh, to Jay for the end. Uh, so are you seeing any changes Oh, wait, I think that's the same number. Any changes in enrollment numbers for the fall to confirm, should we expect an announcement of fall procedures by the end of June? And now uh, that is correct by the end of June, by the end of June. Yes, we can confirm that. Uh, and we're going to try to get we've said the presidents have both said in their letters that we're going to try to get uh, information out to the community as it comes as well. So we'll try to get additional information out between now and then as uh, we hit milestones. Uh, well, thank you again for joining us, and I'll just throw it to Interim President Hartzell to, to close us off. Yeah, thanks, JB, and thank you all again for taking your time to join us. Uh, we hope you come away with a sense of, of what we know so far and where we're aiming. Uh, there are obviously lots of details to be sorted out, and as JB just said, we're going to do our best to release that as, as they're resolved uh, with ultimate resolution uh, by the end of June. You know, I think it's going to be fun to see the ways that we as a campus uh, rally and continue to find ways to make our students experiences exceptional. It's a world class elite university and now we have uh, the chance to make sure we infuse that through all that we do uh, this coming fall in some ways just in different formats or different uh, delivery mechanisms, but the rest assured uh, that's where our focus is, is making sure that the students come away with uh, one of the best educations uh, in the world, bar none. Um, so we're excited about the future. The fundamentals are great here, and we're looking forward to, to getting over some of these uh, road bumps and uh, between uh, now and then, and returning to uh, what we do so well in terms of our research, our teaching, um, our performing arts faculty, all the, the breadth of talent on campus, and getting them back to work. So thank you very much. Thank you. And Ellie Breed, you may see posted everyone's job titles in the chat uh, area and noted there's a recording of the call. If you have any questions about that information, please just email her or the university uh, media relations account. And we'll get back to you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
That was the conclusion of a virtual call with University of Texas at Austin administrators talking about what a lot of people are wondering about how the fall semester might look since the COVID-19 pandemic is far from over at this point. And they are not sharing very many specifics at this time. They say that by June there will be much more detailed plans to share at that time about what uh, students and faculty members can expect for the fall semester. So we will have to wait and report on that. However, at the moment, they are talking about a number of things. So as you heard, uh, one of the professors, Art Markman, he was saying that they are trying to balance as much in-person experience for students as well as safety concerns. So what will the appropriate social distancing guidelines be? Identify which classes need to meet in person, which can involve a mix of in-person instruction and online instruction, and consider spreading out classes throughout the day. It was interesting to hear him say that, you know, the most popular time to hold classes are from 10 to like 3 in the afternoon or something. So that's when a lot of people would be on campus and milling about the 40 acres. However, he said they may even lengthen the school day so that those classes are more spread out so that there's not such high concentrations of students and staff members as well all at one time on campus. Again, something we will have to follow up on and try to see where they go from there. I'm looking over at my notes as well. Uh, they did have some discussions and got asked a question about what athletics might look like for this upcoming semester. And uh, the president, Greg Finvis, said that they are coordinating with other schools in the Big 12 Conference. And they're also trying to figure out what the football season will look like and how the schedule might play out. No new details to share about that at the moment either. So of course, we'll stay on top of that too. All right, and they were asked uh, if tuition for the fall or housing costs might be lowered. While they didn't say anything specific about that, they did say that summer tuition for classes was reduced by 50% for undergrads, 85% for graduate students. It's still unclear if that might be extended to the fall. We'll have to wait and see on that too. So again, I know that there were not a lot of definite points made in that particular virtual news conference, but at least it gives us some indication about where they're thinking and where their decisions might go from here. Thank you all again for watching. Our stream will be bringing these to you as often as we can. Whenever more information comes in, we want you all to stay informed. Thanks again for watching. I'm Will Dupree here in the KXAN Live studio. We'll see you back here another time. Please, everyone, stay safe and healthy, and if at all possible, still at home.